We're going to mute you all now. So enjoy the class. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to start in a seated position. So in whatever comfortable cross-legged position you can um, get comfortable in. And we're just going to just close the eyes down, just breathe normally and then just slowly start connecting to the breath. So it's just about just getting comfortable with the space, getting head in the space that you're just about to practice yoga for the next hour. And just bringing everything into this moment now. So just close the eyes down and just start hearing the breath. So that Ujjayi breath, which is the inhale through the nose, with hearing the sound in the back of the throat, exhale through the nose, hearing the sound in the back of the throat. So just, just connect to that as best as possible before we start moving into the closes. So this is going to be a really nice chilled Sunday class, which I love. I look forward to a really nice chilled class. So each time you breathe, just bring, just, just start feeling a little bit more internal instead of external. So how we do that is just start listening to the sounds externally. Just acknowledging the sounds, don't analyze the sounds. And then eventually just drown those sounds out by your breath. then you're becoming internal. Just continue this really beautiful way to start the morning. Before the busyness of the day kicks in, just enjoy this hour to yourself. And then when you're ready, just keep the eyes closed down and just rub the palms of the hands together. And just keep rubbing them just to Build up a little bit of friction, a bit of heat in those hands. And then when you're ready, just cup your eyes with the hands and just slowly start opening the eyes, bringing a bit of warmth around that area. And then just release the hands and bring the hands on the knees. Beautiful. Okay, so good morning all. We're going to start the class a little bit different. It's We're going through... Um, Pavan Muktasana or Pawan Muktasana series, which is um, which is a wind removing series of poses. Um, but we're doing the seated version. There's about four different versions, so we're going to do a, a version of the seated version. So some of you may have done this with me before. Um, so the idea is is to release all the air that's in the joints, and I'll explain that as we go through. So. Our joints are tight generally this time of the morning and that's due to air being trapped in the joints. So we're going to start with that. So we're going to start with the fingers and all I want you to do with the fingers is just move them in this fashion. Okay, so we're just moving the fingers in that fashion. Then what we want to do is interlace all 10 fingers and then squeeze the fingers tight. 
So what you want to do is see the whites of your knuckles. Just squeeze them as tight as possible. Then we're going to push the hands away from us, moving the knuckles in the opposite direction. Then we're going to squeeze and then push away. Squeeze, then push away. If you have arthritis, this could be a little bit painful, but just bear with it and go through it to how you can do it. This is good to help with easing the pain of arthritis. And then just release the fingers and then just start on the wrists. So we move the wrists both ways, back, forward, around. Then we're going to do the left elbow. So just put your hand on the bicep and just move the elbow as much as you can back and forward. Then the left shoulder, so rolling the shoulder. And then moving the shoulder across, back around, so reach around, grab the shoulder, across, and back around. Then back to the right side, so we'll just do the elbow. Then the shoulder, so we're reaching across, then back around, across. You might feel a few cracks, I hear a few cracks, I'm hearing plenty here. And back around. Okay, so then we're going to interlace all 10 fingers again and turn them up and move the hands up so they're pointing up. It'll uh, bring the biceps towards the ears and we're just gonna move down to the right, uh, left, sorry. Back up the center, down to the right. Keep the seat bones on the floor and just move right to left, left to right. That's it, beautiful. Reach up as much as you can, and then we're going to come forward, bringing the palms to the floor, and then move the palms forward on the floor. So keep crawling forward. Not here for too long, just trying to remove this air in the spine now. Then walk the hands back, and bring the hands behind you, turn the fingers towards you if you can, shoulder blades together. Stir them up, rock the head back. And then coming back to center, coming up. We're gonna bring the left hand on the outside of the right knee, right hand behind, lengthen through the spine and twist. Coming back to center. So right hand on left, lengthen, twist. and back to center. So just one more to the side. So bring the palms together, cross the thumbs this time, and then just come down to the left and hold there and keep reaching. Come back to center and down to the right and do the same. And back to center, bring the hands down, stretch the legs out. We're gonna start the same way, so just wiggling the toes. And now reach the toes, if you need to bend the knees, do that. And manipulate the toes, forward, back, around, forward, back, around. Manipulate the toes. Then what you're gonna do is, under your feet, is you're just gonna grab your hand and just rub as hard as you can under your feet. Up to the toes and bend the toes backwards. Couple of times, both sides. So push as hard as you can into the feet. And release. So then the ankles. So right, you know, round, back and forward. And then we're gonna pick up the left knee. So just bring the hands in behind the knee and we're just moving the knee up and down. 
it's almost like Simon says, it's really good watching everyone do what I say. <laughs> so then we're going to come into the hip. So we're going to bring the left foot into the elbow if you can, the right elbow, and bring the left elbow around and then grab the fingers. So the best possible way you can, if you've got to hold it with the, the hand like this, that's fine. So then we're just going to rock the baby nice and slowly. Spend a bit of time in this one. This is a really nice stretch through the glute. The higher you lift the foot, the closer you get to the chest, obviously the deeper the stretch. You can bend forward with this. You can come back. Just feel what you need to do in this one. It's a really nice series. When um, I was in the ashram, this is sort of a morning routine, one of the parts of the morning routine that you do every day. Then when you're ready, we're going to pick the left foot up and place it over our head. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> if you can do it, go for it. I can't. And then we're just going to release that left leg. So knee on the right side. Crunch, crack. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my crunching, but it's pretty bad. And then we're going to rock the baby on this side. So again, spend a little bit of time, feel your own body and just understand what you need in that stretch. My knee, my right knee is a little bit tight, so I can't get in as deep as I did on the other side. So I'm listening to that and doing what I need to do. And then relax. So then we inhale, come into Paschimottanasana quickly so you can have the knees bend if you like. Whatever you need, just to reach through that lower back. And then coming back up to centre, then we twist again. So we're going to bring the left hand to the Right knee, right hand behind. Twist, so keep the legs straight. You can bend it up a bit if you need to. Back to center, coming into the other side. And then coming back to center. So now we're gonna go back into Sukhasana or Padmasana, whichever is comfortable for you. So that, that's part of a series of power muktasana. Um, and power muktasana just means wind removing pose. But we're going to do the abdominal organs uh, when we lay down. So we'll move into that then. So what we're going to do now is cat cow, but the seated version, seated version of cat cow. So we just move into cow pose and cat pose in this way. So cow pose is first, so we inhale. Shoulder blades together, sternum up, chin away from the chest. Just hold there. Exhale, roll the shoulders forward, chin to the chest, turn that spine into a C shape, belly button to the spine. Then inhale, come back into cow. So work through cat cow this way. So we're rolling the shoulders for cat, chin to the chest. <coughs> Shoulder blades together, chin away from the chest, the cow. So just move in this fashion. It's really nice just to close the eyes down and work through this. So just as you go through that, we're going to do this for about a minute. So just work through it. Just focusing on the breath and the movement. Continually work with the breath, connect to the breath. So we've got another minute to go. So just working through. 
So these sort of movements, Pama Muktasana, is getting rid of the stagnant energy, which is air in between the joints. We'll be talking more about Ayurveda um, as we go on, but Ayurveda is like the science of life and it's, it works on your individual um, program, really. So the air that's stuck in your joints is what they call vata. And so we need to, vata is responsible for movement in the body. So we need to move that air around. And once you move that air around, you could become a little bit, um, what do they call it? A um, little bit airy in the head. So then what we have to do is just move into Katha, which is relaxation. So we're moving from Vata to Katha. So just release, relax the legs, and then just connect to the breath again. So just allow everything now to settle. So this is like our Shavasana. It's the break between our poses. And when you're ready, open the eyes if they're not already open. Bring the soles of the feet together. We'll come into Baddha Konasana. So bring the feet forward. Have a nice diamond shape. Interlace all 10 fingers. Place them under your feet and pull on the feet. And come down on the exhale. So just remember you can have anything you like in front of you, like a cushion or, or a block. And work your way around that. Come into a rest. You can have it sitting up. This is a really nice way. I like to get into Baddha Konasana. So push down on that pillow or whatever, but pull up, keep pulling up. So we're working through the back. So you're in this pose for a few minutes. So just enjoy. Stretch. Just remember you can always come out and reset. Always come out and reset if you need to. But while you're in the pose, connect to the breath, the ujjayi breath. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. Hear that snoring sound in the back of the throat. Continue connecting to that breath. And then once you're comfortable in the pose, as much as you can be, you connect it to the breath, then we find the stillness. Become as still as possible. Attempt to resist any urge to move unless the urge is really important and you have to move. Don't worry about your head getting to your toes. If you are there, that's great. If you're not, it's great as well. What we're, we're all achieving the same thing is trying to open up through that spine, open up through the hips. We're trying to move all that vata energy around the body. And vata is high energy. So we move the high energy through the body by opening up the joints. But then we get into what we call an earthing zone like Kapha. And we try and relax so that we can move that Vata energy around the body. So the reason that the, the way you would know you have Vata energy, if there's too much going on in your life or in the day or in this moment, that means you've got too much Vata energy running through the body. 
So then you control the breath and that eases the Vata energy. So just become focused on one thing and one thing only and that will give you good positive Vata energy. So 20 seconds to go. Well done. So many people getting to, you can just see getting deeper and deeper into the pose. So just relax, come out of the pose, nice and slow. Gonna move into our first Shavasana. So laying on our backs. Just bring the feet away from each other, so to the corner of the mat. Bring the arms away from the body, palms facing upward. Bring the shoulder blades together, sternum up, chin towards the chest. Just feel the sensations. I was just feeling the sensations then. I felt my left foot getting warmer than my right foot and I realised I was on a candle. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, this is a really cool sensation. <laughs> so just relax and breathe. Couple more breaths and we're going to move into Pava Muktasana for the internal organs. So when you're ready, We're just going to bring the feet together and then bend the right knee up. Interlace all 10 fingers, place them below the knee, so on top of the shin. Keep that left leg straight and bring the right knee away from the body and pull it up to the shoulder blade, uh, to the armpit. Keep pulling and squeezing. So again, the Pada Muktasana here works on your hand. So you want to make sure that you see the whites of your knuckles. That's how much you're pulling down. You should feel a pinch between the hip and the thigh. Massaging the ascending colon right now. So holding here, we're going to be here for a minute. So really important to focus on that breath as you're pulling down as much as you can. So another four or five breaths here. So make sure you're pulling down as much as you can. You really want to block that blood flow off with the ascending colon. And you'll feel this rush of blood the minute you release, flushing out that area, getting rid of the, the stagnant vata energy, just moving it around the body. And it might come out of the body. You never know. When you're ready, release, straighten that right leg. Pick up the left leg, bend the knee, interlace all 10 fingers, place below the knee, just on the shin. Bring the knee away from the body, 
and pull up towards the left arm. Again, get yourself comfortable. You've got a minute here. Pull down. Connecting to that breath. Make sure you're hearing yourself breathe. So this is massaging the descending colon now. So when you're ready, slowly come out of the pose, release that left leg down, and just give it a few breaths just to allow that blood to flow back through the ascending colon. Now we're gonna bend up both knees. And what we need to do here is make sure we can reach around as far as possible, it might just be the wrists, forearms or elbows if you can, squeeze the knees into the chest, pull the knees into the chest as much as you can. So we really want to bring it up to the stomach, into the chest and keep squeezing here. So if we're here for less time, it's about 30 seconds here. So keep squeezing. And if you can, try and drop that tailbone towards the floor as you pull in, massaging the transverse colon here. So this will heat the body up. Probably take your breath away a little bit. So focus on that breath. And these, this set of poses, part of Muktas is good for if you're constipated as well. So it'll ease that. So release, bring the legs down, straight down. You don't need to move them side to side. We'll do that shortly. We just need the legs flat out. You just feel that blood rushing through the hips and through the abdominal organs. Just experience that feeling. So the next pose, we're going to stay in this position. So you can have a look what I'm going to do if you like, or just listen to what I'm going to say. So we're going to bend the left knee up and bring the left foot underneath the right buttock. Okay, so our right leg is actually over the top of the foot. Then we're going to bend the right knee up and bring the hand, left hand, onto the outside of the knee and just bring it across the body. Now that bottom foot, if you can grab it, pull it up towards the bum and bring the right knee across the body. Try and have the shoulder blades on the ground. So just keep that knee bent. I know this is cat pulling the tail with a bent knee. Both knees bent. So we're not using a strap. We're just making it a nice, easy twist. So hold in that position for a couple of minutes. It's really good. You should feel a really nice twist in that back, in the spine, in the hips. You also 
and this is part of Parva Muktasana as well. So you're actually blocking off a lot of blood flow in the abdominal organs here. This is just an extension to that. So today's class is just getting all that stagnant energy, the, the, the really good vata energy moving around the body instead of being stuck in certain places, which is not useful. So you've got about 50 seconds to go. So just that breath, that's it. It's all you need to focus on. Hear yourself breathe. And when you're ready, slowly untwist. I'm going to move straight into the other side. So stretch the legs out first. Just allow that blood to get back through the knee, at least. Bend the right, the right foot up. Grab it with your left hand if you can. And then bend the left knee, right hand on the outside of the knee. Twisting to the opposite side. Focusing on the breath. If you can, keep pulling that bottom foot up. Keep working the shoulder blades to the floor. And keep working the top knee over. Get a really nice stretch through the hips. Get a massage through the abdominal organs. Another 20 seconds to go. And then slowly. Coming out of the pose, come into Shavasana. Stretching those legs out, feet away from each other, arms away from the body, palms facing up. Just allow all that blood to start flowing through the body. Still keeping connected to that breath. So just got a couple more stretches, a bit of breathing, a short meditation, and then yoga nidra. So 
really started to loosen up all those joints through the body, started to move the energy through the body. So now we're going to stay in the same position to come into happy baby. So because we twisted and pushed the hips together, we need to bring them out. Okay, so happy baby is a really nice one while you're laying on your back. So soles of the feet facing up, grab the outsides of the feet if you can. If you can't, grab the big toes or the inside of the feet or behind the knees or the shins, whatever's comfortable for you. We want the knees out as wide as possible, so away from the rib cage, coming down towards the floor. And you just pull down as you need to. Connecting to the breath. So we've just got a couple of minutes here. So this full pose here, this shoulder blades coming onto the floor, back of the head onto the floor. Keep bringing those shoulders down to the floor. As you bring the knees either side of the rib cage, soles of the feet are facing up. And we drop the hips down to the floor. So we want the tailbone onto the floor as we keep pulling down those feet. So we're lengthening through the spine here, chin towards the chest. So work towards that movement. So just for the last 40 seconds, I'm gonna get you to change it up a little bit. So what I want you to do is push the feet up towards the ceiling, trying to straighten your legs as much as you can. Okay, so try and straighten the legs. But have your hands on the feet somehow or on the toes and bring the, the, the legs apart a little bit further. So then we're getting into the hamstrings. Now drop the tailbone towards the floor, shoulder blades towards the floor. Beautiful. You're all looking amazing. Keep breathing. And then slowly coming out of the pose into Shavasana. Just allow that blood now to flow directly through the body. Feel a really nice release in the hips after that pose. And when you're ready, bring the knees into the chest, have a squeeze. Then we're going to roll up and come into prone position. So on our stomachs, we're just going to move through a back bend and a forward bend just for about 30 or 40 seconds each. So the, the back bend is um, you've got the choice. You can come into sphinx, which is elbows underneath the shoulders, hands straight out. We push the shoulder blade, we bring the shoulder blades together and push the chest up. Okay, so that is Sphinx pose. You wanna come into seal, squeeze the glutes a little bit and push the floor away with straight arms. Okay, so that's your option there. So we're not in this for too long to so get a good stretch here. Just 
just from laying on our back for all that time and twisting, we just want to get a good forward bend and back bend. So we get the back bend now. Whichever one you're in, just breathe. And whichever one you're in, what I want you to do now is bring the shoulder blades together. So even if you've got to bend your arms and move your arms, shoulder blades together and come straight back into the position again. You just feel that spine opening up even more. And then release, slowly come down. Help yourself up and we're gonna come into child's pose. So knees out wide, big toes touch if you can. Hips back to the heels. So just remember that with child's pose, hips back to the heels, then start coming down. So in other words, you want your hips as far back as possible before you start bringing the head down to the floor. Doesn't mean you gotta, doesn't mean your hips have got to touch the heels, but bring them as far back as you can. And always remember if your hips can't touch back there, you can always use a pillow or a cushion behind you. A bolster's really good. Just to give you that feeling of that pushing against something is gonna get you quicker down to your, your heels to be able to touch your heels. And when you're ready, help yourself up. We're gonna come into Sukhasana or comfortable seated pose. We're gonna prepare for um, yoga nidra. So yoga nidra is gonna go for about 12 minutes, I'd say. Um, so the preparation here is just so we can be comfortable to lay down. So we're gonna move straight into alternate nostril breathing. This is one of the best preparations to be able to lay in a spot. So there's two, two breaths we're gonna do. A lot of you know the breath. So it's alternate nostril breathing and Kapalabhati. So that clears the mind so we can relax. So alternate nostril is peace fingers in the middle of the eyebrows or on the third eye. We're gonna use the thumb and ring finger to block the nose, to block the nostrils. So take a nice deep breath in, no blockages. Breath out. Lock the right with the thumb and inhale through the left. Deep inhale. Lock left, release right, exhale. Inhale right. Lock right, release left, exhale. Inhale left, lock left, release right, exhale. And just continue that in your own time. You want that inhale deeper each time and you want the exhale slower. So really, really slow out of that exhale. And that nice deep inhale. So this is just clearing the frontal lobe, just all our information that comes into our mind constantly through that front part of the, the brain. So this is just relaxing that. That's why the fingers are on the third eye. The breath is deep and slow, deliberate. So 
Then you're going to finish by breathing completely out of the right nostril. Once you've completed that, bring the hands onto the knees. And we're going to do Kapalabhati. So Kapalabhati is the exhale. So the focus is on the exhale. We're just going to do three sets of 30. Okay, so three sets of 30. So one stroke is this. So 30 strokes, have a breath. Do another 30 strokes, have a breath, and another 30 strokes. Okay, so just focus on the exhale. Close the eyes down. Don't matter what's going on around you, just focus on that exhale and the belly button moving in and out. So when you're ready, deep breath in and breathe. Once you finish 30, breathe in again and exhale. Last set, inhale and exhale. And what I want you to do is keep the eyes closed, become as still as possible, have your hands in a comfortable position. And then just focus on the inhale only. Once you get those lungs full, focus on the exhale only. Now on the inhale, next time you're going to say so to yourself. So, so. And the exhale is hum. So, so hum, so hum. Inhale, so. Exhale, hum. Just continue the so hum just for about 30 seconds or so. And then when you're ready, I'm going to get you to lay down in Shavasana. Get yourself as comfortable as possible. I'm going to go through a yoga nidra. The yoga nidra will probably go, it's about 12 minutes too, so probably go just over the 10 o'clock mark. So hopefully you can hang around as long as you can for yoga nidra and enjoy this experience. And if you haven't had this experience before, it's complete relaxation. It's about all I can tell you it is. It's complete relaxation. It's probably the best relaxation you get all day. And this, this amount is probably equivalent to about two hours sleep, what we're going to do now. So it's just completely relaxed. You don't have to do anything other than relax. But just now I'll get you to think of a, a resolve to so something that you want to bring into your life. Think of a short sentence that's going to get you to say that to yourself three times when I ask you to say that to yourself three times. Think of that resolve. Think of something you want to bring into your life. And now you're just preparing for yoga nidra. Yoga nidra is a form of tantra, so it's not sleeping. It's not concentration. It's opening the inner chambers of your mind. So in Yoga Nidra, you step down into the internal dimension of your consciousness. Even if you don't understand anything in Yoga Nidra, that doesn't matter. The sound of my voice acts as a rope. So just as you take a rope and go in and out of the depths of a cave, so with the help of my sound, you will venture in and out of your mind. 
So eyes are closed, body still, the mind is in a mood to relax. So you're not trying to concentrate, make no effort to control the mind. You're practicing yoga nidra and become aware of your whole body. You are laying in a beautiful place. Become aware of your whole body. So where you're laying, the whole atmosphere has changed with one type of powerful vibration. There's an atmosphere of you laying on your mat and your body being still. The sound of your breath is very rhythm rhythmic and slow. Your body is in a state of relaxation. Now think to yourself mentally, I'm going to practice yoga nidra. I'm listening to the instructions. A constant communication is taking place between myself and yourself. You can hear the sound of my voice and we are connected. One transmitter with many receivers. So resolve, resolve, resolve. At this point, you should make a sankalpa or a resolve. So just say this to yourself three times. Mentally, repeat that resolve to yourself three times mentally. This resolve is something you want to bring into your life. So we always start the over nidra with rotation of consciousness. Nothing changes with that. Just keep listening to me and go on doing the practice as I indicate. No concentration, please. Do not try to analyze things. Just become aware of your right hand thumb and mentally say to yourself, right hand thumb, no movement. The right hand thumb. Then we continue through the parts of the body. Again, the right hand thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, palm of the hand, back of the hand, the wrist, the lower arm, the elbow, the upper arm, your shoulder, armpit, the right waist, the right hip, the right thigh, the right knee, the right calf muscle, the right ankle, the right heel, the top of the right foot, the sole of the right foot, the right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe. Now go to the left side. The left side and become aware of the left hand thumb. Become aware of the left hand thumb. Second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, palm of the hand. Become aware of the back of the hand, the left wrist, the lower arm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit. The left waist, the left hip, the left thigh, the left knee, the left calf muscle, left ankle, left heel, top of the left foot, sole of the left foot, the left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe. Now the back, next is the back of the body, the back of the head, the back of the neck. The right shoulder blade, the left shoulder blade, the right buttock, the left buttock. Now the right heel and the left heel. Now the front of the body, from the top of the head, the forehead, the right temple, the left temple, the right ear, the left ear. The right eyebrow, the left eyebrow, the space between the eyebrows. The right eye, the left eye. The right nostril, the left nostril, the whole of the nose. The right cheek. The left cheek. Upper lip, lower lip, the space between the lips. Now both lips together. The chin, the neck, the right collarbone, the left. Collarbone, 
the right side of the chest, the left side of the chest, the middle of the chest, the navel, upper abdomen, lower abdomen, right leg, left leg, right arm, left arm, the whole of the head, the whole of the body, the whole of the body, the whole of the body. Now become aware of the body laying on the floor. There is a point where the body is in contact with the floor. Bring your awareness to that particular point of contact. So the heels and the floor, both heels are on the floor. And there is a point where they touch the floor. Now from the top of the head, the head and the floor, the back and the floor, the right hand and the floor, the left hand and the floor, the right elbow and the floor, the left elbow and the floor, the buttocks and the floor, the hamstrings and the floor, the heels and the floor. Imagine the meeting points of the body and the floor, the whole body and the floor, the body is on the floor, become aware of the whole body. Do not contract, do not expand, do not sleep. You're practicing yoga nidra. We're just moving into the breath. Be aware of the breath. Become aware of the breath. We're going to count the breath, each inhale, each exhale. We're going to count the breath from 21 down to zero. Just like this, inhale 21. Exhale 21. Inhale 20. Exhale 20. Inhale 19. Exhale 19. Go all the way down to zero. No sleeping, just awareness in the breath. The breath and awareness. If you make a mistake, go back to 21 and start again. No sleeping. It's breath and awareness, awareness and breath. Just be aware of the breath and the counting. You make a mistake, go back to 21, start again. If you get to zero, go back and start again to 21. No sleeping. Just awareness of the breath and counting. So cease awareness of counting. Bring your mind and awareness to the eyebrow center, the space between the eyebrows. Bring your awareness to the eyebrow center. Do not leave the point of awareness of the eyebrow center until I tell you to leave that point. I will enumerate a few objects. As I name each one, try to visualize it very quickly. If you can't, don't worry, just keep on following my instructions. Sometimes I'll go slow, sometimes fast. We'll also repeat images a number of times, perhaps. Just follow the instructions, awareness on the eyebrow center. Become awareness of the dark eyebrow center, the awareness of the eyebrow center, the darkness. 
and the awareness, the pink rose, become aware of a pink rose, the waves on an ocean, the blue sky in the evening, a dark night, tiny sh star shining stars studded in heaven, a high mountain range with snow-capped peaks, a ship sailing on the high seas, a white sandy beach, a virgin forest with tall and dense trees, a dove, a galloping horse, a small hut in the woods, a stormy night, a full moon, a mountain stream, a lonely rock in the mountains, a big garden of blooming flowers, the rising sun. Keep your awareness focused on the eyebrow centre and visualise a large lake with a lotus floating, a sailing boat, people swimming, a lonely wooden hut in the mountains, a desolated valley, a high mountain with snow-capped peaks, a quiet evening, a beautiful sunset, chirping birds, a tiger in the forest, an elephant, a cobra, the symbol of Om the sound of a bell ringing, waves on the ocean, a ship at sail, full moon, calm and quiet evening in the moonlight, a mountain stream, refreshing cold bath in the mountain stream, an experience of exhilaration. Now become aware of the breath. Inhale through the left nostril and exhale through the right nostril. Just start the practice of mental alternate nostril breathing. Left in, right out. Right in, left out. Come back to the middle of the eyebrows again. Visualize the rising sun, red like a tomato, clouds gathering in the sky, drizzling rain, fog all around a pink rose, sunflower, an apple, a lettuce leaf, a hot water spring, tall pine trees, a cluster of grapes, the symbol of Om, a lonely wooden hut in the valley, snow-capped peaks, a mountain stream, a cold bath, a ship at sail on the sea, a lotus on a lake, people swimming in the lake. Now become aware of the whole body. Think that I am practicing yoga nidra. Visualize your whole body and everybody who's around you, all the space that's around you. Become aware of your external environment and become aware of yourself. Say to yourself, I am practicing yoga nidra. Now repeat your sankalpa. Three times mentally to yourself, the same one you said at the beginning of the practice, the resolve, the sankalpa. Now become aware of your external environment. Come out of the spirit of Yoga Nidra and return slowly to normal awareness. You can start moving your body. And when you're ready, open your eyes, slowly sitting up the practice of Yoga Nidra is now complete.
Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. It was, um, it was a really nice one, actually, to read out. So I hope you all feel good. We really moved all that energy around the body. That was the idea of today's class. And then just get you in that peaceful place. So I hope it all worked. And have a wonderful rest of Sunday. Thank you so much for coming. Namaste. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put you all on unmute. Thanks, guys. Have a Thank wonderful you. Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Smiles at the end of Yoga Nidra. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye, Amanda. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.